Carol here. Warm welcome to my craft room. Well, here we go. This is the flat eight and a half by ten inch chalk ink. That's what we're starting with canvas. Now, remember I did an LDRS creative uh, card that was four and a quarter by eight and three quarter inches long, and I did this canvas before I ever saw the stamps and dies that I received for the design team project and I thought it was remarkable that I did this canvas first wanting to do two dolphins coming out of the water and it was more or less just a practice canvas good thing <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say because I'm gonna tell you something sometimes when we do things there's a point where we need to stop and I didn't do it with this, so I ended up not being able to, you know, give it away or, well, give it away. I just, uh, yeah, I went too far and it didn't turn out as well as I had planned. If I had stopped three quarters of the way through, I think I would have been more satisfied with it. But I want to share the process. Here I'm using the cobblestone color of the buttercream. Lux, it's made... Uh, it's a uh, soft gloss, high performance acrylic paint in two fluid ounce jars. You get it at, um, I got it at Joann's in the States. And it's beautifully creamy, the chalk inks. It has a beautiful collection of, of paints. But I want to tell you that I also used Apple Barrel, I used Deco Art paint, I used Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, you know, Dollar Store where I have nothing there is a dollar. And I mixed it up with all different kinds of paints. And here, I wanted to get a little stippling effect. So I used this decorative, uh, it almost looks like sand, actually. And I got this, oh my, at the thrift store years ago. Years ago, I bought three jugs, that like actual jars of it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought because it's gold, it has these gold flecks in it, I could use it for shakers. So many things you can use. It's called decorative gravel. I'm glad I put that up. There it is there. And uh, it's come in handy so many times. So here you have it. First we have the cobblestone color. Then I put more of a creamy color base over top of that with the sponge so that I could make the, um, you know, all of the more or less uh, stippling in it. And then here's another one of the collection. That's how thick it is in that uh, buttercream uh, luxe. I, I think I added pink, blue, teal, mixed it all up as you can see. And this is going to be the actual uh, water, the, the ocean. And um, adding the pink to it. Uh, actually, the pink is the, it's called Painterly Pink. It's by Rango. It's Claudine Helmuth Studio semi-gloss acrylic paint that I put in there as the pink. And I, that's why I wanted to show you this. You know, not, uh, you can see I'm wiggling it to make kind of, it's just a practice uh, piece. And if it had have turned out the way I wanted it to, if I had stopped where I wanted to, I think I would have given it away with the card I made because both of them were so in tune one with another. But what I thought I would do on this one, because I am not a painter, you know, I, I don't give credit for me being uh, this acrylic painter, I'm not. I love to practice with acrylics if I want to do a project. But, uh, yeah, I don't take myself seriously, and I just have fun with it. So I added the pink to the top. Now, when you're doing any scenes, which I forgot, you want to make sure you have a straight horizon line and work with the rule of thirds if possible. And here you can tell I didn't. Uh, I think I had a quarter on the top, two-thirds in the middle, and maybe a third on the bottom. But I did straighten that up when it came to remembrance that, you know what, Carol, you need a straight line across there. You need a horizon line. But I was practicing with all different styles of paints and waves and trying to get that look of an ocean that I completely forgot. Now, this is really funny. Uh, It'll, you'll find the humor in it later. This is white uh, Walmart 
paint and it's very it has that liquid you know it doesn't have a thickness to it that uh, yeah I'm going right hand left hand it doesn't matter <laughs> which hand I use it's not going to come out in the end the way I had visually um, you know thought of it and I did put it away like to dry for a couple of days and I think that's where I went wrong I let it dry so you have all of that stippling in there okay this is a, a deep deep black navy it's quite dark and I added that in there because under the waves I wanted to put some waves in here so I thought okay I'm going to need some dark underneath when I push the wave over top I thought it would be nice to have some um, you know dark a dark element to it some contrast and then I thought oh my yeah don't go cartoony on me Carol so I thought, okay, that's a little bit too dark. So I'll grab my white and I'll make it into a gray. And that's the beauty of acrylic paints. I have to say that. So much fun. The, it's almost like when you were a child and you did finger painting. It has that element of free form that I really, really enjoy. And I think I got it on the bottom as far as having sand and uh, I think that worked out well, but I do have to straighten up the fact that I need that horizon line and I need to work more with the rule of thirds. A third, you know, of the sky, third of the ocean, and then, of course, the sand. And I'm drying it up here because I need to have, I don't want it to flatten out. So now I'm going with another different, uh, this is from Michaels and you can see it's that beautiful teal and I really did like working with the sponge to get the texture I wanted instead of working with a paintbrush because you can get like 5,222 of them for maybe ten dollars when sales go on at Michaels and use your coupon so you can store up a lot of these one inch sponges and you can actually dip them in water and reuse them uh, if you want but because the cost is so cost effective you can just move on to another one and uh, get rid of it so here I'm thinking okay and I'm going to tell you exactly how I felt as I'm doing this flat canvas at the time uh, you know I like to have texture and yeah ignore that coming into play I don't know what I was thinking there but uh, I kept going from light to dark and I didn't know yes and see how I have this actually I was going to use this on a different card that I had do you remember that one where I used the lights um, and I had the bucket and all that but this painting was too had too much realism in it as I went as I kept going so to add the cartoon style elements that I had used on a different card would have been too harsh you know you have to use either one or the other and uh, here I, re I knew that I had to make closer to the shore I had to have some light tones in there because you're going to get lighter as you come towards you when the water's reaching the sand and then it's going to darken up in the background so here it must have been where I said oh I need that horizon line and remember this had this drying process time so I'm working over it and I thought okay I'm going to have to dry it and then put some painters tape on there later and get that nice fresh line across there you want to have a vivid horizon line you don't want any waves in it just as straight as you can get it it really does um, give you that effect. So I'm working at it here. I wanted to have it as straight as possible. And I really liked adding the pink and the blues and, you know, working with the colors. Here comes that pink again. And honestly, as we're yakking it up here in my craft room, I think it's nice sometimes to use all different kinds of acrylic paint, like, uh, to do your projects with you know this isn't going in a museum and it is a practice piece I was going to you know I, I 
at the end, I would have to give this to a real friend. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, yeah, just, oh my, I went overboard at the end, but that's okay. You know, uh, it sure taught me a lot of things on not what not to do. Here I'm going to add yellow. So I added some white paint here right from the tube where I wanted the sun to break through the clouds here. And that's another story as we get going on this uh, practice piece. You know I keep repeating myself that it's a practice piece. <laughs> yeah, because that's what it ended up being. So you want to work with, you know, one, three, five odd numbers. So I had three light sources breaking through here. And I should have really left it like this and then drew my dolphins and then did the palm tree. You want to make sure also that the light source in the sky will also reflect in your water. Um, that I do know. And uh, yes, when you, when you don't have any formal training, you are just flying by whatever comes to mind. And from your practicing, you learn what not to do and what to do, right? So here I'm going to just uh, hone in so that you can see as I draw two dolphins from scratch here. So I know that dolphins, this is easy peasy. This is just kind of like a cartoon style, realism style dolphin. You need to just have the fins and that dolphin mouth. You can Google it and uh, it would be easy to draw seeing that and here's my ceramic egg cup I bought I show it quite a bit I have the really good golden uh, paints there you can tell they stay firm so I'm going to pick out some of my paint brushes with more of a detailed tip my fan brush of course and we're going to carry on and I want to say that once you let things dry oh yes I'm going to squirt a little bit of paint uh, excuse me, water into that eggshell. And what I like about this, even though you have texture with your pencil that you're working over, it will erase beautifully. I mean, a real beautiful erase, but you need to have the Click White Eraser. Uh, you generally can get these at a stationery store. They're made by, they're called Speed Eraser by Sanford. I'll try and leave a link. So now I'm mixing up to start the actual acrylic painting with my detailed paintbrush of the dolphins coming out of the water. So here are you, okay, here's the things I learned about doing a dolphin. One is getting that mouth down, that kind of a smile look and keeping the eye very, you know, there it looks evil. <laughs> You don't want an eye like that, you know, that serious, yes. You don't want that kind. But the, the cool thing about it is you can take your um, cutting knife and just slide it underneath your acrylic paint and get it up without smudging and, you know, making a mess. And I like the fact that I gave you an up close so you can see, you know, yeah, right over the eye. And doesn't it look, it looks much nicer. You have to be careful um, when you do an eye that if you want a happy eye, I find that a more rounded ovally shape is nice. But once you start putting any pointed edges on it, you get more of a serious eye, you know, more of a sad kind of half oval, sad look. So, you know, there is something to learn in making, um, creating eyes. And I love working, painting on this acrylic board. And it's only, this is from the dollar store where nothing's a dollar. There's nothing uh, expensive about the board itself. And I highly recommend getting it at your dollar store because for practice reasons, if you're just practicing, it's wonderful. And then you can get yourself, you know, a good stretched canvas. But, you know, this is nice to work on. and. Uh, I think I would have kept it to go with that card, like I said before, um, but it didn't work out and there's no way I'm, actually my grandson Hunter loved this when it was finished. So he said he's gonna hang it in his room. <laughs> yeah, 
Family will come through all the time, right? Yes. So I'm adding some blue and teal to the gray. Then your, uh, the one thing I want to say that the top of a dolphin, because they're coming out of the water, you want it to give it that wet look, is to keep it nice and black on the top. And any um, shaded areas where the sun would not get to it, then you can make it nice and black on the fins. You know, and uh, here if I had, like if I would have kept it, yeah, I'm just showing you, I was working with about four paint brushes, so I didn't have to keep dipping it and cleaning it. I could just grab each one that I wanted. And when, I, when you're practicing, that's kind of nice because uh, it saves time. And here I am just showing you, and these are really detailed brushes too, by the way. I get them at Michael's when they go on sale. You can't uh, beat it to get some nice uh, paint brushes. I like working with the, the black velvet line, but you know, as long as it works for you, I say it's fantabulous. And here I'm now. See how I made that mouth look too serious, like too scornful, kind of. Uh, you have to give it an up not take that little line going down make sure you bend that up to a smile because they really do have this smile look and i'm going to clean that up with white i think later i kept looking at it thinking my you are a serious little dolphin there and that's the mama dolphin the baby dolphins in the back and uh yeah and see how i'm going over it and then i'm making some wrinkle marks in the actual dolphin skin out oh, there now there's a nice happy eye if you're going to have an eye standing out and here's the practice like of having those sheen marks with the white acrylic paint and where you need to have uh that really dark black look and the golden paints really did help me here so here's the baby coming out and I had to clean up the face. You can see how I did have to clean that up uh, because it was closer to mama there. So having the, like I said, a good eraser, that click eraser, that white click eraser is fabulous. And I think what I did wrong here as well, uh, I don't like to keep saying that all of this was wrong, but I think I added the other fin to the bottom. I wish I had kept the baby one, one in, one out of the water. I'm just saying that now as I'm doing the voiceover, I'm not quite sure if that was one of the major issues. I added another um, one of the fins, and I do like it right here. And I'm going to show you where I wish I had, <clears throat> excuse me, had a stopped um, creating with it. And you know, I have to say this too. Practice is a wonderful thing. Like, don't throw your stuff out. I always say that, right? If this is the first time you've watched me do a tutorial, I encourage you to not throw the workout that you're not happy with. Otherwise, this would have went in the garbage three quarters of the way through. I would have just said, forget it, you know? Uh, but if you're learning to paint like I am, you can't throw it in the garbage. You have to keep working with it because that's where you're going to learn. You know, the old saying, the old adage is true. We don't like what we don't know. And I always say that we like what we know. And um, yeah, I wasn't uh, liking this. And you want to make sure the backs of them are really black, like just straight black, because the sun is on it, they're wet. And dolphins are black and they have that just like hair. When you're Copic coloring hair and you add that beautiful lilac and that violet in the background, I did that as well on the dolphins. Here I'm cleaning up that eye. I'm adding some streaks uh, so it looks like the belly of the dolphin is bent. Um, you know, you don't want it to look too straight. That's why I'm going to clean up Mama Dolphin there. And here we go. I think, yeah. I think right there I made it look like, when I was looking at it, I remember thinking it looks like a beaver on the bottom. You know, like the beaver tail is sitting on top of the water. 
I would have taken that out. I'm not sure if I did later on, but this is my practice round. And I wanted to just see where I would have... Oh, excuse me. Doesn't he come out all the time? Oh, right over top of the water. Now, here's my rule of thirds. You need to have your horizon line nice and straight. So I thought, what better way, once it was dry, to put the... And have your Coca-Cola handy. That's a must, too. And, yeah, I just put it behind there. I'm thinking, all right, how am I going to make... I still have to put my clouds up there too, by the way. I wanted to have clouds and that was a challenge. Everything but the sandy beach challenged me on this. I'm adding more water because it's probably the next day and I'm refreshing my paints and then I'm going to carry on, yes. And as I'm looking at it here, I think it's up a little bit on the, on the left side but it doesn't matter as long as you have a nice straight line. Now here come, this is so funny. I like doing clouds, I really do. And I think artists have good day cloud days and bad cloud days. You can either make the clouds work for you or they don't. It's getting that middle ground. And I was struggling big time, you know? I didn't want it to look like the water I want it to have its own character. I didn't want this for sure because it looked like a blizzard was coming in. But you do have to have some undertones of navy and gray. I'm covering my little dolphins there because you still want to have... Okay, if I had to do this again, I would have done the dolphins after the clouds, right? Because now it looks like behind the dolphins, there's no clouds at all. It kind of parted ways in the middle. And uh, yeah, so... This is a baby wipe. This is a baby wipe. If you want to get, I mean, that is a look in itself, I suppose, but um, it's down too far. I think my cloud's on the left. You can judge yourself as you're looking at it, you know. Maybe you would have stopped sooner uh, if you were me. Just put yourself in my spot and think, okay, if I was doing this, what would you have? done better. I know a lot could have been done that would have really added to this um, little painting, you know. But yeah, I certainly, I'm using the black velvet brushes here. I switched over from, um, I keep, I go back to the sponges and I go back to the thinner and then I actually get out my fan brush. I love doing waves with a fan brush. And when, uh, excuse me, when you uh, create cards, you create uh, all different things. Like, you know, you're working with lace like I do, and you're working with painting, you're working with uh, all kinds of art forms. Sometimes you have to be careful that you uh, don't put away, you keep practicing each thing you like because um, you always... Um, how do I say this? You always improve more with what you work with more, right? And uh, yeah, there's my horizon line. And here I'm thinking, oh, I think maybe I'll have rocks in the background. <laughs> the process of this was hysterical. And then I'm thinking, okay, yeah, I have to add some of the, get back that uh, sunlight back there. And here's where I started to really, really struggle. This was my struggle. Because if you can tell, I liked the clouds to the left. I really did. And this is where, and I liked them right there. Carol, stop, stop, stop. I liked the right. I finally got that nice poofy look I like. And look what I did. I was dissatisfied with the left, so I took it all off. That's what I do. Yes. I just took a baby wipe and quickly got rid of it all as much as I could. Because this went was drying, right? It had the drawing time. So what was underneath was already set. I wasn't going to lose that at all. So I thought, all right, let's start again. And that's my water well, the one you press the button and the water goes down and fresh water comes up. So I go back to having thunderclouds. I don't know. Um, as soon as I see, you know, this is where I said, I don't know whether I should have stopped here. I should have stopped there. Uh, and I didn't like that, so out came the baby wipe, and off it went. 
But now I have to clean up uh, little mama baby dolphin coming out of the water because, you know, I lost some of its beautiful um, contour on the skin. So I had to go back with that. So now I'm going back to the poofy clouds. And right there, you know, this is what I'm saying. Just stop there, Carol. I wish I had stopped right there. I love the clouds up above the dolphins. They turned out really nice. And just like I said, the more you practice, the better you get. And I was kind of happy, but I knew I had to darken up the under parts of the cloud because clouds aren't just white. They, they have, you know, black hues and blue and violet, all kinds of things. So I wasn't satisfied with this, so I took my baby wipe again. And now I'm going to use water. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to try and take parts off with the baby wipe and move my clouds up. So they're not so far down to my horizon line. And then I have to remember I have the sun rays going in the water. So I need to add them again behind the clouds. Yes, yeah, so are you getting bored senseless yet? I know for anybody that really does know how to paint, this is probably very painful to watch, I'm sure. Like I said, however, I wanted you to be able to look at this and wherever you think it's nicest, if there is that possibility, I would stop the tutorial and then if you want to, uh, you know, do the same type of picture, it's quite easy. And if you're practicing, I love to practice with more inexpensive uh, supplies. And here's that pouncer now, I've gone to a round pouncer. Now you can get a really nice cloud look with a round pouncer. You can, you can get those uh, shading spots underneath your clouds to make the white stick out. I mean, I wasn't doing it here, but you can. And uh, I'm so my left hand's working with the straight uh, sponge. There it is. And then I switch over. Yeah. Have you ever seen somebody take off clothes so much in your life? Oh, I yeah. This is what's called struggle art. Um, and I still had to do something with the waves. You know, your water doesn't end like that at the sand. You have to have some kind of um, depth or something there, some kind of shadow or something. But I'm still clouding it. I'm still working with my clouds. I'm going with the pouncer. By now, I really have to erase it. And I took a lot out. I only put in a small portion, just so you could see if you use the pouncer, if you use the straight sponge, if you use your uh, paint brushes, what effect you will get. How high should you have your clouds? How low should you have your clouds? So much to think of, isn't there? So now I thought, okay, I'm gonna deepen the water up farther away. Uh, it was way too light, but now, remember, I have a lot of dimension on this. There's a lot of uh, texture on this because it's all dry, and it's a new day, and I'm starting again. So I am painting on the waves. I'm going dark, dark to the back, and here I'm going to lighten up more of a turquoise yellow to the front and back to the clouds. <laughs> I'm not giving up. That looks like a doggy paw right up there. So I'm not giving up. I don't know what I'm thinking about here. I'm slowing it down, but I really did want to uh, get better versed with my clouds. You know, I wanted my clouds and myself to be one. Um, and then having the undertone there as I'm watching it really did help because then you can have the poofy white cloud on the outside. I'm thinking I'm kind of liking it right here if I left it right like that. It's always the thing, should I leave it there? Should I leave it there? And uh, yeah, so anywho, you have to be really um, appreciate practice, right? I really think you do. And I think you have to like, uh, you have to have patience just viewing this tutorial. <laughs> So if you've gone this far, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I was not going to put this up. You know, I really wasn't. But my grandson, my little four-year-old grandson said, Nanny, I like that. I like that. And so I thought, you know what? This is dedicated to you, Hunter. <laughs>
and to all those that struggle with painting. Don't give up. Honestly, it will come to fruition sooner or later. So here I wanted to add that uh, kind of uh, moss green to the back. But I have to be careful to make sure I have that straight horizon line, right? Now comes the fan brush. Oh my, yes, this could have been, mm -hmm. oh yeah. I'm trying to add clouds to the back of my dolphins without anybody knowing they weren't there, you know. And that means, guess what? I have to redo the black because I'm losing my dolphins right there. And uh, it made nice feather marks, though, like for the waves. It made those nice lines on the waves if I had to stop there. And uh, it made some nice texture lines on the baby and the mama that I'm going to take out. So the fan brush has a life of its own. And I'm going into the black here, then I'm going to take it all off. And then another thing you can do, this is a brand new day, you can tell, um, with the cloth, clothing changes, right? So back to the detail brush, and I'm going to get my dolphin. So I like my dolphins. I can't continue if all of it I'm not happy with. I have to be happy with something. So I keep going, and I'm working with the, uh, finishing up the dolphins, taking out some of those white lines that are just too white. Um, I like the fan brush if you separate it with your hand. Here I'm just showing you how, um, what that water well looks like. Very inexpensive too. I'll leave that over on my uh, blog for you. It looks like it would be expensive. It's not. It's very inexpensive. And here you go. I'm straightening up the eyes. I want that mouth on that mama there. I've got to make it into a smile. Dolphins always have that cute little smile. And because the water was a little bit turbulent to the back, um, yeah, I'm losing the tail fins, if that's what you call them, on the back of it. And I wanted to make sure the body was very shiny black. You know, it did have some gray and white in it, but I wanted it to be shiny. And uh, yeah, so now instead of a nice calming water that they're just, you know, it just looked out. I don't know what I have right here. I really don't. It's, uh, you know, it, it pleases young people to see something like this. But it's not going to please, like, you know, uh, an artist that, that paints. You know, I get it. If you're a beautiful acrylic painter, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just practicing, yes. Don't. Don't be too harsh. I'm, I'm just trying my best to make it look like clouds, water, two dolphins, and sand. Yes. And, uh, yeah. So here's where everything went wrong. This is my mark right here where everything, I just, I just, you know, it was like a guessing game. I wanted it to be dark underneath the waves. I kind of... Uh, knew I wanted to do that. I wanted to straighten up my horizon line right there, make it nice and dark at the black, at the back. And um, yeah, the right side clouds. Oh my, I got to get into something like that. Now I'm working with the underneath of the waves and wait till you see, I don't know, it, it looks like something really hit the, the wind really hit because I take that fan brush and I have so many water, um, waterfalls coming down it's absolutely crazy it's just like they're going quick the mom is saying quick get back in the water <laughs> what's she doing yes oh dear but I kept going now I remember I was gonna put a palm tree in here yes um, I was gonna put a palm tree to the left Wait till you see what I decided to do. I don't know what I was thinking, but I knew if I put a palm tree and it, the leaves in that would take over from my mama dolphin. It would be too big. I wanted the dolphins to be my focal point. So I went with crazy rocks. Can you believe it? Wait till you see it. It's hysterical. Oh, I think I was crying tears here, like a, a being, laughing, thinking, okay, now I'm actually doing on my clouds with a fan brush and then I'm doing waterfalls on here on my turbulent water and I was having 
even though it's not turning out how I wanted it, I was having a blast. I was. I enjoy everything I do, whether it turns out it doesn't turn out, you know. And I think we need to show people the things that work and what doesn't work. What to do and what not to do. And the rock thing uh, was a not to do, yes. And I could have practiced a little more on my clouds at the end, but I knew this wasn't going any, you know, this was to Oh, here's my, oh, here's my seagull. You have to have a seagull on a rock. I did four rocks and a seagull. So that was five. And uh, seagulls, like, hello, every ocean scene has to have a seagull somewhere. And I just loved this little seagull when I was done. I really did on that rock. I don't know about the rest of the rocks. I do put water coming over my rocks. I have three different browns and a black going in those rocks. But here I am just, and you've got to remember, this is just from my mom, you know, obviously I'm just, uh, this is just freehand drawing here. I'm not looking at anything to do this. This is just kind of like, yeah, see that? Oh my, really funny. I, I like my mama uh, dolphin. If I had a skinny the bottom up a little bit more. Um, yeah, sometimes when you're practicing, you, you don't want to get too critical of your stuff. Now I know what to do. I know what not to do. And I know I love my little seagull here. He's just so cute. I mean, if he doesn't look like a seagull, so you could say it's a pelican. Or it's a, um, yeah, it's a bird. You can go with a bird. Oh, look at me. I'm taking my baby wipe and swirling my rock. I wasn't happy with that, the look of the rock. I had to bring it back with some texture. I don't know. I've not worked with rocks in the water before. And you're saying, no kidding, Carol, you haven't had rocks on a painting before. No, I haven't. But anyway, 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 I'm adding some water to the rocks, making it look kind of choppy and the water coming down. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for taking the time to join me on this fun tutorial, on this practice board. Uh, a couple of dolphins jumping out of the water with a few rocks and, of course, my seagull. I appreciate you subscribing to my channel and I appreciate your comments. You know I enjoy reading them and I enjoy answering them. So have yourself a blessed week and I look forward to putting up my next tutorial. All right, just putting some more black on my dolphins and you take care, everybody. Bye now.